old bones, my old bones. It's the rheumatism, I should think. I hope you're not in much pain. Uh, Deary me. Can I do anything for you? Uh, Aren't you rather cold here? Now you go on. Worrity, worrity. There never was such a child. Won't you let me walk you round to the other side? <laughs> You'll be out of the cold wind there. Worrity, worrity, worrity. Oh, can't you leave a body alone? Would you like me to read you a bit of this? You may read it if you have a mind to. Nobody's hindering you that I know of. Latest news. The exploring party have made another tour in the pantry and have found five new lumps of white sugar. Large and in fine condition. In coming back... Any brown sugar? Mm, no, it says nothing about brown. No brown sugar. A nice exploring party. In coming back, they had a sad accident. Two of their party were engulfed. What what? Engulfed. There's no such word in the language. But it's in this paper. Let it stop there. <laughs> You're not well at all. Can't I do anything for you? It's all along of the wig. Along of the wig? You'd be cross too if you had a wig like mine. They jokes at one and they worry it's one. And then I gets cross and I gets cold and I gets under a tree. And I gets a yellow handkerchief and I ties up my face as at the present. Tying up the face is very good for the toothache. And it's very good for the conceit. Is that a kind of toothache? Well, no. It's when you hold your head up so without bending your neck. Oh, you mean stiff neck? Oh, that's a newfangled name. It was called conceit in my day. Conceit isn't a disease at all. It is, though. Wait till you have it, and then you'll know. And when you catches it, just try tying a yellow handkerchief around your face. It'll cure you in no time. The wig would be much neater if you had a comb. What? You're a bee, are you? And you've got a comb. Mm -hmm. Much honey? Not that sort of comb. It's to comb hair with. Mm. Your wig is so very rough, you know. I'll tell you how I came to put it on. <clears throat> when I was young, my ringlets waved and curled and crinkled on my head. And then they said, you should be shaved and wear a yellow wig instead. But when I followed their advice and they had witnessed the effect, they said I did not look so nice as they had ventured to expect. They said the wig did not fit and so it made me look extremely plain. But what was I to do, you know? My ringlets would not grow again. And now that I am old and gray, and all my hair is nearly gone, they take my wig from me and say, how can you put such rubbish on? And still, whenever I appear, they hoot at me and call me pig. And that is why they do it, dear, because I wear a yellow wig. Yeah, I'm very sorry for you. And I think if your wig fitted a little better, then they wouldn't tease you quite so much. Your wig fits very well. It's the shape of your head that mm. does it. Your jaws are not well shaped, though. I should think you couldn't bite well. well I can bite anything I want. Not with a mouth as small as that. <laughs> if you was a fighting now, could you get hold of the other one by the back of the neck? I'm afraid not. Well, that's because your jaws are too short. But the top of your head is nice and smooth. Then your eyes. 
Arthur too much in front. <laughs> One would have done as well as two, if you must have them so close. <laughs> I think I must be going now. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. And thank you. And now for the last brook, and to be a queen. How grand it sounds. The eighth square at last.